they usually use this criteria called DSM. So the def defining a phobia would be similar to both parties. But psychiatrist doctrine basically believes that mental illnesses and behavioral issues are a result of an underlying biological pathology because you have a, a different gene or because you have some pathology in your brain or because you have an imbalance in your neurotransmitters or hormones. So they give a biological explanation for the behavioral issues. Where psychologists would believe that uh, a behavioral issue or a mental illness is because of an underlying psychological issue where you have an imbalance of your uh, personality or it could be a conflict in your subconscious mind or you have learned something when you are small that which is a maladaptive behavior. And then since you yeah, are looking at the treatments based on the causes, psychiatrists would resort to drug therapy because they need to fix a biological problem. And psychologists would recommend psychotherapy because they need to fix the psychological issues. So the differences, in bet uh, differences between the underlying causes that each uh, doctrine gives about the mental illnesses and based on that, the treatments that they recommend. So I that's see. the basic difference. Uh, on that note, I think we need to go in for a short uh, commercial break. But don't go away. We'll be right back. And as soon as we get back, we'll be speaking to these two uh, psychologists here in our studio very shortly. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning Sri Lanka. We have uh, two uh, special gentlemen uh, talking about phobia today. And uh, you know, Wasam and I are the perfect host to do this type of show <laughs> because we suffer from the same consequences, I think. Uh, well, not me. Well, I'm, I'm better. In, di di <laughs> in different forms. In different forms, man. Well, you are afraid of the dark, I'm so much to say. I mean, I'm not. Yes. <laughs> Wasam, uh, did you know by any chance the popular international news presenter, Anderson Cooper, also has a phobia? Yeah, I kind of heard about that one. Yes. yes, he's very scared of cockroaches. It seems. Yeah, and, and what yeah. is the term that they call it? Exactly, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. So we will ask a question from uh, them. Many of us fear cockroaches. I think a lot of girls said that, you know, they're very, very scared. Uh, but there's also a phobia named uh, Katzildophobia. Does it go along that uh, word or is, is there a specific scientific term that you uh, call that? No? Mm, well, I don't remember that, that okay. particular name. Mm -hmm. but well, I think <laughs> anyway, Banu, when it comes but, but to all sorts of phobias, they've got all sorts of names. Yes. And sometimes they're like unheard of. And and the best part is like you hear a weird name which, may, which is associated with a phobia. I mean, you know what the phobia is about, but you have no idea what the name is. But sometimes it is very common uh, to find out that you know this particular phobia is very common in this particular uh, age group or category. Your thoughts on it? Well, now about these names first time. Yes. Us. If you look at, if you just Google it, you come up, you come up with a whole list of yes, names of course. <laughs> which you never heard of. I mean, for uh, fear for long words, fear for cockroaches, fear for leeches, fear for like. So so individual names, is it? Individual names mm -hmm. for each and every every phobia of uh, you know that that you can imagine. Yes. And actually, that, that's quite interesting because I need to ask you this: Can you have a phobia for almost anything? Anything. Like even if it's like a table or this sofa or something you I'm wearing. You don't hear of such things, but you could. Is it possible? You could. Depending on what your association is. That's why it's irrational. It doesn't make any sense. But you could have. And in terms of um, the people you associate with, uh, peer pressure stories you've heard, can they result to uh, things as causes for phobia? Yeah, we call it like social learning. We learn from our own experience and also what pe other people tell us. Because uh, I'm sure, like uh, Banu said, when he was small, he was afraid of the dark. So I don't know if you've like heard any ghost stories and stuff. <laughs> were you were you into? Did you watch a bad horror movie, Banu? Uh, I, oh, I'm, to? I'm a big fan of horror, so maybe. Uh, but does that have well, that's an impact as well? <laughs> but that, that's a good question that you actually raised. Up. Does that have an impact as well about the environment factors, the movies that you watch, the lifestyle that you have, or is it just a uh, is it just in the genes? It could. I mean, it, now, now this is the thing. Now you, you spoke of darkness, but there are certain fears that we are pre-programmed 
prepared to learn to mm -hmm. fear. For example, darkness, heights. Because in the evol if you think of the evolution, we are not meant to fly. We are not, uh, and then in, if you look at the evolution pages, we are not supposed to be working in the night because it was dangerous anyway. So, uh, snakes for that matter. Yeah. I mean, most, most of these little, uh, you know, uh, some dangerous insects, spiders. The evolution, they were a real threat. So, there is a preparedness in our mind to be afraid of these things. So, mentally you kind of know, okay, I'm... Um, yeah, you're yeah, prepared. Not, not, it won't come automatically. Yes. Then you probably learn it from social cues. Okay. If, if you see your mother screaming the moment she sees a cockroach, or your father for that matter, <laughs> well, you would eventually see, okay, now, I'm, I see this happening. This is probably, a re there's a reason for her to act like that. So, as a child, you learn that. And then you can also associate it with a real experience that you had a very unpleasant experience of the spider falling on you or you seeing a spider attack or at, 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 attacking a human being. So you associate these things and ultimately develop a rational phobia, I rational see. fear rather. <laughs> I see. Also, um, um, one thing which, uh, okay, if, if you take a, a personal instance for me, for example, I, I deal with a lot of kids in terms of theatre and I, I, I teach them uh, theatre on stage and uh, I come across a lot of kids who are afraid of you know, they have something called stage fear, stage fright. And one of the things I try to do before I put them on stage, I try to conduct workshops in terms of building confidence. Um, now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to associate these two words, confidence and courage. Um, a lot of people say when they're afraid of something, they don't have confidence, they don't have courage. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, is, is it really a vital role? Is it, is it just that the person is not courageous enough, not confident enough that they sometimes get into all these sorts of fears? Well, it, it's about how they feel. It's about how they feel. And for you, or for me, if I look at someone and say, well, it's just lack of courage. That's how we see it. But for that person, that's a real fear. He, he or she sees a real danger, a real threat in his or her own perception, the way he or she sees the world. So that's a real situation that they really find uncomfortable with. I see. And it's irrational, fine. I mean, they know it probably, sometimes they don't know that it's irrational, but they have a real fear. So the help you might be associating it with, you know, coupling, I mean, teaching them to feel relaxed in themselves and also dealing with the situation, which can be done with many methods. You can experiment with them where they feel confident, then also changing their thinking pattern about the situation. I see. So it, 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 it's, it's correct to say that it's all in the mind? It's all in the mind, and but of course, the, it's how they see the world. Yeah, it's all. <laughs> it's all we get into the final minutes of the show, unfortunately. But uh, Dr. Darshan, I just want to ask, um, what sort of advice that you would like to give to someone who's watching the show right now, uh, who's either suffering from phobia, him or herself, or um, knowing someone, maybe a family member or a close friend? Yes. Now, uh, adding to what he said, like in for a person who's having a phobia. It's a real fear. They are aware of it, but they can't help but get scared of it. So labeling a person who has a fear, uh, calling he's a coward, and then uh, saying he, he, he lacks uh, courage, and uh, he's uh, scared of things that even a small kid is not scared of, that would really, you know, like harm the individual, and he, he might lose his self-esteem, and then in the long run, he may even develop clinical depression, because he basically thinks that he, he he's different and he's abnormal and then he he is something uh, of like lesser man or a lesser woman in that case so uh, that is something that should not be done and the other thing is for what he said he was telling what we do in a clinical setting uh, in his own language and in his own way now uh, he said that uh, for when you find kids with uh, stage fright he's doing workshops okay. so that is the basis of this treatment called systematic desensitization what as the name suggests systematically desensitize the individual and stage fright is of course not a phobia it's a very common uh, scenario uh, but uh, extreme fear of performing in front of a public even like some there are some, some individuals who can't even sign in front of someone so that would mount to uh, a social phobia but uh, if there is something 
or what any kind of a fear that causes uh, you to, uh, inability to continue with your day-to-day -day life. If the best thing is uh, to seek uh, help from an individual who is uh, trained and uh, skilled and qualified to uh, help you with that situation. And it is very important that the individuals around him to prevent him from labeling because it is not lack of courage, it's not lack of, it's not being less brave or something like that. It could happen to anyone. You could be the brave, like the, the sc scariest person on earth. You could be the most brave person on earth and you could be scared of a gecko. And that does not mean that uh, he, he, he's, uh, you know, like uh, he, he lacks uh, or it's a matter of masculinity or something like that. that so uh, it's, it's important to accept that it is a condition and uh, because when we have the, 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 this problem comes uh, in terms of mental illnesses because now for example if anyone gets common cold or in that case anyone gets measles or something we don't label uh, you measles patients or something like that uh, when he's having measles we would not go near him and then after that uh, when he recovers we will be okay with it but this uh, stigma associates with uh, mental illnesses even after the person has recovered you're not willing to s you are not willing to accept you still think he's crazy or something like that so labeling is something which is really detrimental so if you have anyone in the family uh, the best thing is that you direct them towards uh, some form of uh, formal treatment so one thing that we need to reiterate on good morning Sri Lanka on this special episode today is that it's nothing abnormal uh, so many people do uh, suffer from uh, phobia, but yet they can actually um, uh, go through and overcome. Yes, uh, well, that it is an abnormal condition. It, it is, is abnormal. a common abnormality. Common abnormality. That's how you <laughs> correctly put it. Common abnormality, yes. indeed, Banu. Well, we've definitely been learning a lot from these two psychologists. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Unfortunately, we've come to the final moments of this segment. Uh, but of course, when we do come back, we have a psychiatrist, and we're going to check on more scientific terms in terms of phobia. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us, and have a great weekend and an excellent Friday ahead. So don't go away. We'll be right back. On Good Morning Sri Lanka.